Fifth, face your challenge. In this episode, we are going to go over step number five of seven, answering the question, how to turn a negative experience into a positive outcome. Get ready. This is going to be a powerful storytelling session to illustrate my point on how to face the challenge, take any challenge and turn it into an opportunity. So I'm Doug Andrew and I've been blessed in my life to have authored 12 books thus far. And my 10th book was uh, titled Entitlement Abolition. How to lead your family, your employees, whoever uh, you care about from me, me, me to we together. We're better. One of the concepts in this book that I teach is how to take a negative experience because we all have them in our lives and turn it into a positive outcome. And so I created seven steps to empower you to be able to handle any curveball life throws at you and transform it into a positive outcome. So we're in the middle of this. I would strongly recommend if you have not watched the first four steps to do so. This is step number five, and I'm going to explain how to face the challenge head on. So if you have not had the opportunity to watch the uh, first four episodes addressing this seven step process, I have a 20 page document, which I titled the negative experience transformer. This is step number five. And I'm going to show you at the end of the episode, how you can get a copy of this for free and also a copy of my book entitlement abolition. It's over 200 pages free of cost. You simply contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. Okay. So as we go through this process of taking a negative experience, and transforming it into a positive outcome. We've talked about the power of getting your mindset with a, an attitude of gratitude and also keeping the big picture in mind. And step number three, it talked about how to deal with crisis deadlines, uh, offenses or insults with faith, hope, and charity. Step number four was to begin to get out of yourself and begin to ask yourself how and why are other people feeling confused? isolated and powerless. How can I give them clarity, confidence, and capability by mustering up LRC leadership, relationship, and creativity. Now, once you have done the first four steps, you're ready for step number five. And this is simply to face your challenge head on and actually change the viewpoint where you are seeing opportunities instead of challenges in life. Now we all have heard stories of different situations like Apollo 13, where, you know, failure was not an option. And, uh, what they needed to do was they began to become possibility thinkers. You don't think about all the things that can go wrong or the domino effect. You begin to see the opportunities when you overcome the challenge. So I'm going to share with you one of my favorite stories that I have shared with many troubled youth when I mentor them, how to take the negative experiences in their life and turn them into positive outcomes. And they need to learn from going through this negative experience and overcoming you become strong that way. So here's the story and I'll share it with you based upon uh, me paraphrasing what happened, but you'll see why it's one of my favorite. So the first time I heard this story, it was at a PMA positive mental attitude rally with Dr. Robert Schuler. And he told the story of Brett Livingston strong. Now, who is he? He was a young Australian immigrant artist who came here from Australia because he had learned and heard that America, was the land of opportunity. And so he couldn't wait to get here in America. And so he was living in a little humble apartment in Los Angeles, and he could only afford this little black and white TV set. And so he's trying to figure out how can I get a name for myself as an artist? Because artists sometimes are like a dime a dozen out there. And he's thinking, golly, how can I do this? And he's watching the news. 
He was very intrigued because of this unique country and state of California because the number one story on the news every night uh, was centered around a guy who had built this beautiful uh, beach home in Malibu. And he had invested a, a ton of money on, on this beautiful home in Malibu on the beach. He realized that there was this rock protruding from the cliffs above where he had built his home. Now, the rock had been there for, what, centuries. He knew the rock was there when he got his building permit and chose to build a home beneath the rock, okay? Uh, and yet, when he completed his home, he began to petition the state of California to pay for the removal of that rock. And it was above Malibu Beach, so it, it got the name the Malibu Rock during these nightly newscasts. Well, he uh, wasn't uh, getting very much success by himself, so he rallied his neighbors, got petitions. Long story short, after three weeks, he finally convinced the state of California to take taxpayer dollars and remove the rock because it was a threat. It was gonna come down in an earthquake and destroy his property, maybe kill somebody and so forth. And so he made a big to-do. And of course, California usually gives in to those kinds of petitions, if you haven't noticed. Brett Livingston Strong is watching this uh, unfold on the news every night. And he's like, wow, this is quite the country where you can actually force uh, fellow citizens, uh, taxpayers, to pay for the removal of something that was there before you ever chose to build your house below it. But he thought, well, okay, uh, nothing else better to do. I'm gonna go down and observe this. So here's what happened. So Brett Livingston Strong went down to observe the demolition crews and they had choppers, they had dozers. They worked on removing this rock all morning. Finally in the afternoon, they broke it loose and it got away from them. And it rolled down and landed smack dab in the middle of US Pacific Coastal Highway 1. Now, I'm not so sure if this was the exact rock that I searched on Google, but it was a 116 ton rock blocking traffic. Rush hour is gonna happen. And the state engineer with Caltran is there going, oh dear. This is where Brett looked at what everybody else saw as a challenge or a threat and he turned it into an opportunity. In actuality, the geologists studied and found that two thirds of this rock was still embedded so deep in the mountain, an earthquake of seven or eight on the Richter scale would have never broken the rock loose. It was never a threat, but Brett turned it into an opportunity. He walked up to the head engineer and said, sir, I would like to buy that rock. And the guy said, you can have it. He said, no, I want, a, I want a receipt, official receipt that I am the rightful owner of this rock. I'll buy it for a hundred bucks but I don't have a hundred dollars on me. I, I got a dollar on me and he says, okay, give me a dollar, you know, down payment or whatever. It's your rock, buddy. And he gave him the receipt and he says, now it's your rock, you move it. You pay to have it moved. Brett went down to a major shopping center and convinced them if they would pay for a chopper to remove this 116 ton rock, he would lease it to them, rent it to them for six months to put in the center court of their mall that would attract customers, people would buy clothes, ice cream, everything else. It was, it, it was already, the, the publicity was already done. It's called the Malibu Rock. On one condition that he could go to work with a hammer and chisel on this rock for the six months. That gave him income while he was working on the rock. So here are pictures of him working on this rock. Finally, the day arrived when he was going to unveil the rock. All three uh, major news stations were down there. He was going to unveil the rock and pull the canvas off, but he invited a man dying of cancer to come down to view this, in a, and he was in a wheelchair. And as he unveiled the rock, <clears throat> in the image of the rock was John Wayne, the Western cowboy movie star. It's what Orange County John Wayne Airport is named after. The man in the wheelchair was John Wayne. This was 1977. John Wayne leaned back and said, I like it. Brett sold that rock for $1.1 million. Now, some people say, well, you never got the full 1.1. He only got 800,000. Uh, 800, Who cares? 
He never turned and looked back. He, everybody wanted him to do art. He had more opportunities than he had capability. But see, he took what everybody saw as a threat and he turned it into an opportunity. He took a hundred bucks and turned it into 1.1 million. And he had more opportunities the rest of his life because of how he viewed what everybody else saw as a threat. He faced it and said, this is an opportunity. So if this is resonating with you, uh, be sure and click uh, like, share, post a comment but subscribe to this three dimensional wealth channel and click the little bell. So you'll be notified every time I post a new episode, which I do almost on a daily basis and stay with me to the end. Cause I want to gift you a copy of my book entitlement abolition and give you the ability to be able to learn stories like this, to empower you and those you care about to take negative experiences and turn them into positive outcomes. So let me give you a tool to be able to face the challenge. So whenever I teach this to my own children and grandchildren, sometimes I'll have them pick some type of a threat or a situation and see an opportunity that everybody else says, Oh, that's a problem. How do we overcome this? And so I, one of my favorite tools that I developed years ago is what I call the solution formulator. And in fact, when I give it to uh, my children and grandchildren, I print it out on cardstock on 11 by 17. So let me quickly show you the power behind this. And then uh, at the end, I'll show you where you can have access to tools like this. So the solution formulator is designed to take you through critical thinking on how to face any challenge and come up with a solution. So I'm going to just show you quickly here. You start out by describing the problem or the situation. And you think about the big picture, which is one of the steps here the step number two in this transformer. And how is this going to change once you overcome this situation and you see an opportunity here. Now you see number three isn't on this part. It's down on the bottom, right? Because number three, what you're going to do is down at the bottom, you're going to say the date. But as you begin to fill out the form, I usually give my children and grandchildren 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, pretty soon they would take an hour and they would begin to put down uh, the situation, the problem to overcome. Our children did this on making choices on whether to go on another semester abroad or to stay back home, graduate sooner, later, whatever. This is extremely powerful. So you begin to list the three greatest benefits because the human brain can get around a list of three things. The three greatest benefits when you overcome this negative experience and you transform it. Then you go over here and you list the biggest dangers, roadblocks, hindrances, the, the things that stand in the way of you being able to overcome this experience or the negativity or the fallout from that. Okay. And again, I usually write down three, the top three. Then you go over and you begin to list across each of the barriers, challenges, or dangers you need to eliminate. And I write down what are the best resources or opportunities to overcome each of those challenges. Once I do that, then I start going, Hmm, what new opportunities now arise because of this. And when you get to step number seven, you're going to be blown away with an example of how this made me millions of dollars, how one negative experience made me millions of dollars. So you begin to write down the opportunities and this is down here, the date that you want to list what that you want to have it done. So again, uh, my daughter, when she was out of funds to save, to go on another semester abroad, she'd been to uh, Israel and Egypt. She came back in all of her savings, but she sold her car because she wrote down here, I can sell my car. I have equity. I can get a new car. When I get back, I always required they had skin in the game. They come up with as much as they can, and then they can borrow from mom and dad. And then they have to have a plan to pay it back instead of mom, dad, will you pay for it? Can I have? It all came about by giving them ownership and helping facilitate critical thinking. That's called the solution formulator. And then they write down what the new outcome is, the opportunity, and then they go through a step-by-step -step process of how they're going to now go through that solution formulation and the process to get to from point A to point B. It is so simple and it's on one sheet of paper. This is one of my favorite tools out of the 20 in our uh, tool box that I uh, talk about in the book, Entitlement Abolition. So how can you have uh, access to this? 
I would strongly recommend that you claim your free copy of this book, Entitlement Abolition. You don't need to pay $20 for it. I'll pay for the book. Simply go to entitlementabolitionbook.com. Uh, click on the link below. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll cover the rest of that cost. But also there's options there to listen and learn, watch and learn. There's an 18 hour masterclass and it's in there that you can learn about concepts like this uh, seven step negative experience transformer. So here's to your brighter future.